Hello. So last time we noticed we had people moving around the screen, but they were moving off of the screen. There was no boundary for them. They just kept on wandering away. So well, let's try to fix that. That's what we want to do today. So let's talk about what happens when they move. <clears throat> this movement needs to be informed by the world. We need to know about these world boundaries. So let's go back to position. Position, when you were moving, we brought in a heading. And we just said x plus equals your direction, y plus equals your direction. We have to do some statements here to say, wait, if my x is too large, then I need to move the other way. So something, we're going to say, wait, heading dot bounce x, and let's do this line again, heading yeah, dx, because we need to go back in the other way. When we bounce, we reverse that heading in that direction, and then we turn ourselves around. We go back over the threshold. We cross the threshold, we need to go back. Well, we want to do the same thing with y, but let's figure out how we say this, right? So obviously if x is less than zero, <clears throat> we've gone too far. Or if x is greater than what? Looks like we need to know about the pain. So here in position, what if we also brought in the world? If that was here, we could also know about the world dot get width. If you've gone too far, then you're going to bounce around. Okay, same thing for the y direction, but everything, uh, copy and paste. Make sure everything changes our y's, but oh, oh, there's some more x's. Change those to y's. There's another x. Change that to y. Get width needs to be get height. All of those small tricky things when we do copy and paste. It makes so much sense, but there are so many small little mistakes to make. So that's going to be nice to bounce things around. If y is less than zero or y is greater than the height, then we want to be bouncing. Oh, but how do we make sure we bring in a pain when somebody calls us? Weren't we calling that back in person? And we were saying, move, oh, red wiggles. We need to pass in the pain. Now, how can we do that? Where does that come from? It looks like we need to save the pain up here like we did. We made it, but we never saved it. Ah, world. <clears throat> equals world. Can't do that one. This stuff world equals world is going to save it up here. It's like, great, you actually did something with it, but you never used it. Let's pass it in here. Okay, let's try this out again. We have people, and what happens when they run into walls? They're coming back inside. But it's only when their center hits the outside do they come back. I would rather it be the edge. And so let's go fix that. To do that, we also need to pass in the radius. And if I can bring in the radius, well, then if x is less than radius, or y is less than radius, and then I know that the edge of my circle is hitting the wall. And if x is greater than world get width minus radius, or world dot get height minus radius, then I also know that I have hit the wall. <coughs> Look at those. They are bouncing away and bouncing off of the walls when their edge hits the wall. 
Okay, so clicking on step is nice to go one thing at a time, but it's kind of tedious. We would like to set up a start and a stop. This is going to require the animation timer. Let's go talk about the animation timer. Over in the controller, we need to set a few more things up. So, let's go look at the controller part. We need to have an animation timer, and it is going to be, uh, let's call it movement again. That's what we were doing earlier. Extend the animation timer. Okay, well, to extend the animation timer we saw before, we need the handle method, and we need a few more things in here. We are going to have our frames per second, 50 frames per second, and our private long interval. Let's make this really big number again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, divided by. frames per second. This helps us know when things happen because handle is going to be called every fraction of a second. It might be fast, it might be slow, depending on the computer we're running it on. But we want to know what's been going on. Uh, make it easy user on us. We're going to call that now. And so if now minus last is greater than interval, we need to do stuff. But we're going to have to have a memory of how long it's been since the last one. So private long last equals zero. Perfect. Okay, so here's the key part where we get to do things. If something needs to happen, we're going to call the step function. Now, at the end of it, we are going to reset last equals now and save our current time as the previous time. And then it will keep on going and accumulate things and know this is the next one. How long has it been since that one? If that interval is finally big enough, then we get to call our action. This is our animation timer. Okay. So, let's make something up here that's going to remember it. This is our clock. Initialize is going to need to set up our clock. Equals a new movement. So, we're all ready to start ticking, but nothing's happening yet. Let's add in just like we did for reset and step. Let's add in our two functions here. Public void start. Well, we need the clock to start, right? And public void stop. Clock has to stop. Okay. So that should be what we need to get going. Let's see what happens back in our scene builder. We need to say, hey, start. There's a cool action you can do now. Oh, not step. Start. <coughs> hey, stop. There's a cool action you can do. It's called stop. Great. And when we run it, finally, Let's see what happens. Make sure everything works from before. We can reset, we can step, and we can start. Oh, there the people go. They are wandering around our world. And we can stop them. We can start them. And we can stop them. Start them and stop them. Okay, so we can start them, and we can start them, 
and we can step them. It's a little strange to be able to push those buttons while the simulation is going. We could start them and then we can reset. Wait, they're still moving. Our timer is still going. Let's fix that up. So when we say reset, we definitely want the clock to stop. When we say start, I don't want to be able to click on the start button or the step button. When I click on stop, I want to be able to click on those other buttons, but not this button. It would be convenient to be able to know about the buttons. So, what? okay, button, start, button. to know what that is and we are going to import the class of button great well there's a couple other buttons out there the stop button and the step button cool let's wire them up while we're thinking about it so start button you are the start button stop button you are the stop button and step button you are the step button okay so since we have those names we can write a method down here called public void disable buttons and let's give ourselves booleans here start boolean stop boolean step. In here we can abstract things away and say hey start dot set oh not start but start button set disable to whatever they told us to do for the start button. Same thing for the stop button and same thing for the step button. I don't forget copy and paste stop over here and step over here so that everything matches up cool so when somebody starts we want to disable which buttons we want to be able to start again so we're going to say true we want to disable that one false and true when somebody stops which buttons do we disable? Start. No, we want to do that again. True and false. Now step shouldn't change anything. And reset, because it stops things. Well, why don't we just call stop instead of clock.stop? That will make it more general to take care of pushing the stop button. When you push reset, you also push the stop button. Okay, reset. Oh, look. The stop button disappeared. We can't stop the simulation because it's not running. Start. And then we can stop. Start. And we can stop. We can stop. Start. And if we reset, boom, everything resets, but things got stopped, and our buttons are now in a good state to be able to run our simulation. Okay, so next time I want to work on the infection process, the collision, knowing when I hit somebody else, and then, depending on how long that takes, we might do the recovery process. Okay, so we will see you next time.